Hi guys, hope you are having a great day. So let's talk about the professional indoor track and field season in the U.S. that has come to a close, shall we? It's been an interesting one, especially considering the absence of the indoor world championships this year. But I want to take a moment to focus on some of the top athletes who really caught my attention. First off, I was really hoping to see some of our sprinters like Aethan Moe and Sidney McLaughlin LeBron dominate this indoor season. Unfortunately, Aethan Moe did not run and Sidney only participated in the 60 meters, which I found interesting but not exactly exciting. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the US and I always want to see our athletes succeed, but I just think Moe and McLaughlin could have taken the 400 and 800 meter events if they wanted to during the indoor season. Now, some questions came up on my end as to why some athletes chose not to participate in the indoor season when it came close to the US championships. And so I wanted to share my thoughts on this as well as others for at least the new people entering this sport. First off, commentator from Athletic LLC mentioned that inadequate prize money and upon looking at a chart, it seems insufficient to motivate some of the top athletes to train for indoors because you have to account for factors like the cost of traveling, dining, safety, and security as well. And your endorsement partners or clubs that they are associated with might or might not choose to fund those engagements depending on the contract. And I am not speaking for Mo or McLaughlin LeVron here. I'm just sharing my thoughts in general. And while money talks, increasing the prize money by adding an extra zero will definitely entice more athletes to take the indoor season more proactively. Now, will that time ever come where we will see more money enter track and field? I don't know. It all depends on if the audience continues to grow, but typically the indoor season tends to be fairly relaxed. And there are other reasons why some athletes choose not to participate. I don't like indoor track. I don't understand why it exists. Here are six reasons why I do not like indoor track. They simply might not prioritize the indoor season and instead want to save that energy, focus, and time for outdoors. These are some of the top reasons I can think of. Nonetheless, athletes who begin your season early have an early advantage in terms of knowing what the competition feels like and build up confidence, but they also go into it having to manage your training expectations to prevent injury and burnout. Also, various factors can affect an athlete's performance, such as differences in indoor and outdoor environments, sickness, insufficient training, missed tests, or disciplinary action, as seen with several athletes who recently failed drug tests and have been suspended. But let's take a look at Europe for a moment. They always seem to have a race going on, and FlowTrack has some amazing clips that you should definitely check out, and I'll have links to them at the bottom of the description. Two names that really stood out to me were Femke Ball and Keely Hodgkinson. These ladies were absolute beasts on the track this indoor season and have been dominating the sprinting and middle distance events in Europe for some time now. In fact, Femke Ball broke the world record with a time of 49.26 at the Dust Championships. Now, talk about impressive. And Hodgkinson still holds the fastest time in the 800 meters that she ran last year. In Leuven, France, she ran an amazing time of 157.87, and the Europeans have really dominated the 800 meters for at least two decades now. The fastest time was Jolanda Siplik of Slovakia. Now, those times back then might be controversial for some to consider, but we have to take them for what they are and accept it. Now, let's get back to the U.S. It is going to be a close call between McLaughlin, LeVron, and Aethan Moe versus the Europeans, in my opinion. McLaughlin, LeVron, has the possibility of beating Femke Ball in the 400 meters and the hurdles. But when it comes to Aethan Moe in the 800 meters running against Hoskinson, for me, it's too early to tell. Last but not least, we saw a spectacular performance from Talifa Diggs and Favor Philly, where Diggs came in first place in the 60 meters, showing her athleticism at the Arkansas Invites on February 10th. Now, of course, Diggs is my favorite athlete this year, but even I was shocked when she won this race. Philly really is quick, 
and versatile in the 60, 100, and 200. So I don't know what to say about this race in the 60 meters college meet, but to call it phenomenal. Bob Diggs and Ophelia ran a 7.15, which is a pretty good collegiate time. So not much one can ask for there. Now, clearly, both the ACC and SEC championships are over by now. I'll try to cover only a select few athletes in the next video that will include Caitlin Tui of the ACC, Diggs, of course, and Britton Wilson of the SEC, and Kennedy Simon of the Big 12, so stay tuned. As for several performances we did see during the indoor season on the men's side, there were still plenty of standout athletes to admire. One of the most notable was Grant Holloway, who set a new world record in the indoor 60-meter hurdles. It was truly impressive feat, and I can only imagine the amount of hard work and dedication that went into achieving it. And of course, we can't forget about the field events. One athlete who stood out to me was Ryan Crozer, who broke the world indoor shot put record with a throw of over 22 meters. It was a remarkable achievement, and he continues to dominate the shot put event, both indoors and outdoors. Overall, while the indoor track and field season may not have been as exciting as it could have been due to the absence of the indoor world championships and some top athletes choosing not to participate, there were still plenty of impressive performances and standout athletes to appreciate. I'm looking forward to seeing what the outdoor season has in store and which athletes will rise to the top of your events. Now, there are a few female athletes who had a generous indoor season without seeing too much media spotlight. I want to summarize just a few. You had Melissa Jefferson, who just turned pro right after the World Athletics Outdoor Championships 2023. She had a modest start, in my opinion, at this past indoor season, averaging 720s and competing in both the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix and Merrill Screams. I think she is likely to improve this year, and I'd give her a break as she turned pro recently. It is a different environment, and the competition is heavy. With more races, I think she is likely to improve as well as her confidence. But another athlete to keep under the radar this year for outdoors is Tamari Davis. She performed pretty well this past indoor season, stormed to a huge personal best of 707 to win the women's 60 meters at the South Carolina Invitational. She beat Natalia White of Jamaica, who returned a time of 723. She also competed in the medals games along with Aaliyah Hobbs and came in second with a time of 708. Those two athletes might end up being unstoppable. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I really ignored Davis last year, and one of my subscribers, Charles, told me to keep an eye on her, and boy, did I regret it. That is why it's important that you guys let me know in the bottom of the comment section on who you think is underrated. I could see Davis qualifying for the championships this year and make it on the US 4x100 team. It is going to be a tight competition because... We have a lot of excellent sprinters. And since June of last year, she has basically ran a sub 11 in the 100 meters. It will definitely be a very interesting year. Now there's a lot of athletes and quite honestly, I wish I could cover everyone. But the fun has just started as outdoor season heads underway. Now a team I hope that gets it together this year is Great Britain. Yegan, I felt, performed well, and Asha Smith, but as a collective team, they really need to improve on your handoffs and avoid disqualification coming out of the blocks. If they can do that, there should be no reason why they cannot finish top three at Worlds this year. But back to Sydney, Afing, Femka, and Keeley, who do you think will come out on top? I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Have an awesome day. Does it, does it excite you to get the opportunity to run a lot more this year? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, we've always been like 
a little more refined than what we choose to do, but I think after last year we kind of figured out our rhythm of things and now we'll be able to branch out a little more. And can you talk about kind of the camaraderie that you do have in your training? Because you have you don't train with the same, um, yeah. you also have like Kenny Harris It's different. still awesome. We see each other every day, all of us have practiced, and it's just cool to be able to cheer one another on and support each other, ask questions. Especially because we have such a range of events, it's really, it's really awesome to have such a good group. So. What's your view on the kid? Very much. Well, Femka, what were you thinking as you stood there on the blocks with the 400, 100 plus 500 meters to go around this track? Yeah, it was just go out fast and uh, see when the electric comes, we keep on going. And you just did that. So as you came up the home straightaway and you crossed, you saw the time and you heard the crowd. What did you think? Yeah, it was amazing, especially already the last 100 meters. I could hear the crowd, and it helped me so much. So thanks a lot. It was great to be at an American track meet. And then what, at the beginning of the 2023 season with an event like this and a Worlds at the end of the year, what are your thoughts about this early performance? Well, I have European indoors, so I always want to do great indoors. I love it. And it was fun to do a 500 to start. The 400 will be short now. <laughs> All righty. Congratulations on a world record. Great start to the season. Thank so if you liked this video, then check out the videos right above or visit our short clip playlist. Have a great day.